<clears throat> so, you know, I'm saying and doing these recordings out of love and respect for every life stream on this planet. I feel it is my calling to slap every brethren upside the head with the most brutally honest truth I can manage to convey. I am not angry, but the manner in which the light burns in me like a raging fire compels me to speak about some of mankind's idiocy in the hope some will awaken. <clears throat> because no one I know is doing this on YouTube at the moment. I don't know anybody else who is being brutally honest about the requirements of life. And my personal feeling is this is the need of the hour. The need of the hour requires just this brutal honesty to slap mankind upside the head. You know, the ascended ones want each of us to embrace our power in the greatest manner possible while in embodiment. Because those in embodiment can do more than the ascended ones can in certain things. Like I said in, in other videos, once a live stream takes the ascension, their ability to directly affect the course of life here changes. It's a bit more hands off because it wouldn't be right for perfect beings to disrupt the cause and effect education <clears throat> that is a necessary teaching mechanism here. Do you understand what I'm saying? Perfect beings are not allowed to wave their wands and free us from our own miscreation. Unless you learn how to call, how di to directly call for their assistance. This is another mechanism of life. And it's the law of life that all beings respect. So mankind's slumber is heavy. The distractions and erroneous beliefs are numerous. The age of the blind leading the blind must end. Don't misunderstand me. I respect the math, the engineering, and other fundamentals of life that we have understood enough to build some of our comforts of civilization. But our current method of prying scientific understanding understanding out of nature is almost criminal and it is destroying society because in order to properly use knowledge a foundation of divine responsibility must be built and understood first and that is done on the inner and is a personal mandate of each and every soul when this is not done, you get what we see in life right now. We have pharmaceutical companies spewing disastrous chemicals upon mankind. We have governments who have no idea how to properly manage a populace. And we, we have wanton waste and corruption on every level of industrial, financial, and corporate expression. It is children running wild in kindergarten. I'll say again, it is children 
running wild in kindergarten. You know, I, I've made earlier statements about our current society being less developed than some of the ancient civilizations we see the ruins of today. Now, I'll elaborate on this. We are still technologically behind some of the ancient stone civilizations we can tour right now on this planet. For example, in Saxe Huaman, if you've ever heard of that ruin, that civilization, if you Google that, or just Google um, uh, oh, polygonal masonry, Google that and look how that civilization used stone if you see it properly, you will see an understanding of life that we do not have right now. We can't even fathom have how they built these walls. Because if you look closely, or let's compare it, compare it to a brick wall today. If you look at a brick from the front side, it has four edges. It's usually a rectangle, right? Two sides are the same length or four, you know, and the other two sides are the same length. It makes a perfect rectangle. That's how we build with things. If you look at polygonal masonry, these rock, these blocks and of stone, some of them incredibly massive, have been shaped to have eight, 10, 12, 16 sides. In complete free form. And it looks like they were melted together to create this geometric perfection. And I guarantee you, it wasn't a bunch of guys sitting out there with copper chisels doing that. They understood something of life that gave them the power to manipulate physical matter. They had a greater understanding at that time. And these walls are so strong, they still stand today. This type of building can withstand so many millennia. It's ridiculous. And we cannot do this today. So another one you can look up is Pumapunku. I think I'm saying that right. If you look at some of the blocks at this site, it is like they were cast. There is an embossing, a recessed nature to these stoneworks that is so phenomenal, we cannot reproduce this today. And it looks like, I mean, the polished surfaces... 90 degree angles, it looks like a cookie cutter just pressed into solid stone and made these amazing shapes that again, this was not done by individuals with chisels. It's too perfect. It's too polished. This is a technology and understanding of life we cannot even replicate today. Now let's look at Baalbek. If you were to look at that site, and this is not the only one, there are massive megalithic stones all over the planet. But Baalbek is a great example. There are stones so massive that were being quarried and moved that there is only a handful of of cranes on this planet today that would even be able to move those blocks. And these cranes that we use in the world that might be capable of moving those blocks, for example, the biggest crane on this planet requires 250 semi-trucks in order to move it. 
Just think about that. There were societies that had powers and understanding how to manipulate nature because they were responsible enough to create their their structures with blocks the size of houses that we cannot really even move or do today. (laughs) All right, and then let's talk about one more thing. The pyramids. And (laughs) it is extremely laughable of how current archaeology, especially Egyptologists, attribute the pyramids to the Egyptian culture. There is nothing in the Great Pyramids to suggest the Egyptians had anything to do with them except a little bit of graffiti by either, was it Khufu or Khafre in the Great Pyramid. He walked in there as a tourist himself and carved some stuff in there. And that is literally the only thing And what appears to be a sarcophagus, yes. But that sarcophagus would have had to have been built into the structure at the time. There was no way to move it in there. But there is no other writing. There is no other art in this pyramid. And again, the precision And the size of the blocks of stone used in the pyramid are not capable of the Egyptian time period to produce. No matter how much they want to think about giant ramps wrapping around the pyramid to build this thing, it did not happen that way. It was from a civilization of such high technology and they still stand today as a memorial, as a testament to a time that was greater than the one we are living in now. And there is so much math in the pyramid that, let me explain this, that pyramid stands as a physical representation of the relationship of the earth to the sun, the circu- not the circumference, the, the outer perimeter of the Great Pyramid, which is eight-sided, by the way. It's not four-sided. It's eight-sided. Look into this. The measurement around the outside of the, of the perimeter at the base of the pyramid is a direct ratio of the circumference of our Earth almost perfectly. And the height of that pyramid from the base to its, to its missing apex is a direct ratio of the distance from the earth to the sun. And the positioning of the pyramid on the planet is the exact geographical center of the landmass of the planet. Its orientation is set in just a way that also showed great intelligence. And there is so much more, but there are actually individuals who have discovered this, who have done all these measurements. And when you see their work to point out just how magnificent the engineering of the pyramid is, that we literally cannot comprehend the intelligence that was required to pull that off and the knowledge and the understanding of life to even make those stone blocks with such precision and to lift them into place. There's millions of blocks in those pyramids. And another thing you will find out there in the quarry, I think it's called Aswan, Aswan quarry, 
you know, there, there are obelisks that are in situ, you know, they were in the process of being carved out. If you go look at the process that is, what is in situ, you know, they were in the process of being carved out. If you go look at the process that is what is still there as a record of how they were removing it, you will see scoop marks. It was like the device they used was literally scooping stone like ice cream. And that's not, that's not some kind of geological anomaly. You are seeing tool marks of some kind of device they were using to scoop solid stone like it was ice cream. And you can see this in many places around the world. There are pyramids all over the planet. And there are some countries that are literally hiding these pyramids, like China. They are taking their pyramids and burying them in dirt and covering them with trees to obscure history. It's so ridiculous. But there is polygonal masonry and there are pyramids in every country on the planet. So this society of intelligence covered the entire planet at one point. And so the other interesting thing you you will see if you go out to some of these ruins is that you will see drill holes. I'm talking about holes that are four, five, six inches in diameter. They're big holes. If you look and the, when these engineers have gone out there and looked in these holes and took measurements, because in the holes, you can see the tool marks from whatever tool was used to core that stone. It's granite. You can see the teeth marks like a spiral as the bit, as the tool bit plunged into the stone and they can measure the amount of progress by each revolution of those tool marks going down this hole. And I explain this because they can measure the speed in which the tool was capable of cutting the stone. We can do this today. And we use diamond bits and carbide bits and tungsten bits, tungsten tipped, you know, tooth core bits to deal with drilling this kind of stone today. But the rate of speed in which these individuals from these past civilizations could core through stone was faster than we can do today. They had tools and machinery that were more impressive than what we have today. So I just share that to make a point that even though we appear to be, you know, this is, we have not just come from, from amoebas. Our current life was, didn't develop from amoebas into this organic complexity that you see today. There have been millions of years of greater civilizations on this planet than what we have today. Yeah, so, I mean, you tell me how supposedly unillumined mankind could know of these measurements of the solar system tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of years ago. I mean, it's quite obvious that these civilizations were beyond our capabilities today. So one of my personal theories and feeling is that these civilizations earned the right to use a higher understanding of sound frequency to manipulate stone in all these ways that we're talking about. That's just my running theory. So th- I think there is a vibrational aspect to the tools they were using to be able to cut everything with such laser precision. And the scooping tool I mentioned that maybe it was some kind of sound device that literally like almost melted rock as it came in contact with it. But 
We shall see. So the next question you have to ask is what happened to these civilizations if they were so great? And I'll say exactly what happened to six previous times on this planet. This planet has had six golden ages that have come and gone because mankind at some point has always turned away from the light, return to a selfish and greed-filled nature. And in the end, the natural forces of this planet were compelled to completely destroy all record of them through planetary upheaval. And what we see on the surface of the earth now is just the little remaining from the last closest time of greatness. You know, and some of the proof of this, of what I'm saying is, there are mines all over this planet in various countries, okay? Mining companies, and they bore into the earth following veins of gold, silver, copper, whatever, coal. And some of these mining companies have discovered items, physical items, and a couple of these are a stone hammer. Another thing was a metal cup that looked like almost like a measuring cup with a, with a pourable spout. And these things that look almost like a bell, like a hand bell that you would just ring calling for service from a butler or something of that nature. But they discovered this hammer in particular when they're mining in the earth through strata of the earth that it was three to 400 million years old, they found a metal hammer. And what the, whatever this ha hammer is made out of is an alloy that didn't rust away. It had a wooden handle, but it was completely embedded in the stone from strata that is geologically known to have been from three to 400 million years ago. And there's coal mines that have discovered these metal, uh, metal, uh, not instruments, but you know, items, these cups and bells completely encased in coal from hundreds of millions of years ago. So how would these items get buried so deep in the earth if not from the exact planetary upheaval I spoke about? And they survived all those years. It's really fascinating. So the reason why I'm going into this and say all this is because I love my brethren and I want those who have already established themselves as some kind of authority figure in the matters of history, in spiritual matters and whatnot, to all awaken further. Because you have a great responsibility to your audience to do so and to make that transition requires true humility. It requires the humility to understand how to empty yourself of all the bullshit intellectual falsehood that locks you into a path of blindness. You know, some may say, who are you to speak like this to any of us? And I will be the first to tell you, I am nobody. I am an absolute nobody. As far as how this world measures up a person. But I tell you, being a nobody is way easier than being a somebody in this current global predicament. 
But I am speaking with this authority now because life compels me to. I have humbled and cleaned myself enough to be given true eyes to see and a return to direct instruction from on high. It is a privilege of any life stream to do this who makes the necessary effort. And you have no idea how freeing, how freeing it is to empty yourself and to stop collecting all the worthless information this world passes off as knowledge and to just be empty. To be empty and still. Still inside, still in the mind, in order to receive direct from the universal exactly whatever true divine understanding the moment requires. All power is found in this simplicity. Your entire divine inheritance is dependent upon is dependent upon this understanding be empty to know all absolute humility is the requirement to be welcomed into the halls of universal knowing and it's such a contradiction of how humanity views education now such is the way of this world where it's almost totally upside down from reality. All right, thank you, everyone.